Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel once again. Today we're out working on a 2011 Ford Escape that has a no crank condition. And this is very common on the 2008 through 2012 Ford Escapes and 2008 through 2011 Ford Focus. And the reason being is they all use the same faulty ignition lock module. Now this ignition lock module is designed to transfer the ignition lock cylinder state over to the ignition switch and of course lock the steering column whenever the key is to the off position in there. Now what happens over time is the internal components inside of here wear out so when you turn it to the run position or the start position it doesn't transfer that same state over to the ignition switch and therefore it never sends the command for your vehicle to start the starter to engage either hybrid or not. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you exactly how to test it before you ever pull it off and go purchase one of these and start replacing it because it is a quite a process to change one of these but I'm going to walk you through it today and of course we're going to show you how to test it. Okay so this is the way you want to test the ignition lock module. So you'll take your key, you'll put it to the run position, okay, we're going to verify there's no theft light blinking, everything looks good to go, everything's powering up. And then we're going to take it and we're going to turn it to the start position. Nothing. The vehicle did not start as you can see by the RPM gauge there or the ready to drive mode indicator on the hybrids. What you do is you take your hand while it's still in the start position and not responding and we're going to push it in. And just like that it'll start. Now that's the way to test it. You take up that slack in the ignition lock module and if you want you can do this a couple of times just to really verify. So like that time it started right up without pushing it in and it can be intermittent like that so you need to realize that. The key is to catch it when it's happening like it's doing it again and then push in and there it goes. We're ready to go and on gasoline engines non-hybrids it would of course be showing an rpm reading and the engine would be running all right so let's go ahead and take apart the steering column shroud right here and then we'll start taking off the steering wheel and the airbag yes we got to pull the airbag too like i said it's a little involved uh but it's not too bad i'll walk you through it so let's go ahead and get our key out of the ignition and then underneath here you'll see holes underneath here and one right there. It's a 5.5 millimeter. Take those three screws out and then we'll start separating the top part here. So we'll go ahead and get those three screws out. They're just small little screws. Make sure you don't lose them. They are special little screws with their 5.5 millimeter heads. Now up here, this part and the upper part here just simply separates. And you can use a cat claw like this, but it's plastic. It's gonna kind of damage it a little bit. So you can reach behind here on the side and just start separating it on here like that. Just give it a little bit of a pull like that and a movement and it just kind of, it just kind of falls apart. So these two pieces um, are designed to come apart. This one is binding a little bit. Just be careful with this stuff. Give it a little wiggle like that. You know, get it unhooked. Don't be too crazy with it. You're gonna break it. And let's put these pieces off to the side. And then this lower portion, we're gonna drop it down like that. And then we're gonna take our locking lever right here, flick it down, bring it out, okay. And then we're gonna get underneath here and pull this down just gives us a little bit more room it's not really in the way we'll kind of move this around a little bit and we'll get it through the hook on here and we'll get this out of the way too now once that steering column shroud is off of there you can see it exposes the guts of the the column and all the wires and actuators and everything else inside of here what we're gonna do now is we're gonna disconnect this connector right here okay it has a little retainer right here this is the ignition switch right here. Over here, disconnect that one. And 
there's a retainer right there for the main harness. We're gonna pull that out, separate it. Okay, just a little push pin. And basically get all these little electrical connectors disconnected uh, so we can start pulling the components off of here. All right, now airbag removal on these is a special treat. No longer are there eight millimeter bolts and access covers on the side here to unbolt it and then simply flop it out of there and disconnect it. The way you take these out is there's a little hole right there and you're gonna blindly stick a three millimeter Allen right on through there, straight as possible, okay? And we're gonna release these spring clips that lock this sucker in. So they made it much easier for the assembly line, but not for us. Now, if I didn't mention it already, when you're pulling airbags, you want to disconnect the battery for 10 minutes, allow the system to depower. And that looks a little something like this. We'll stick it in there all the way. We're touching the release clip right now, and we're gonna push it in and try to get both sides released. Now, a lot of times this happens where just one side does. Don't attempt to go any further. Just push it back in. Okay, we're locked back in and start over again. You want to try to release both sides evenly. Oh, just like that. Now, once the airbag is released from the steering column, we can go ahead and lay it down real gentle. And then we're going to disconnect the two inflators right here. Simply grab them on the sides, release the tabs, and it pulls right off of there. Same thing over here. And of course, don't forget your horn. It just simply pushes on the spade connector. And then we're going to take our live airbag and we're going to face it up just like this on the ground. Not like this. We're going to face it just like this onto the ground away. All right, now with the airbag out of the way, nice and safe, there's two more things inside of here. We have the bolt in the middle, which is a T50. And then right here, there's another connector and that's for all the accessories for the volume and stuff like that. So you simply disconnect that, push in a little tab, wiggle it, oh, there we go, and get that out of the way. And then we'll take this bolt fully out on here. Now this steering wheel is pressed onto the steering shaft onto here. So we're gonna have to use a puller and get it off here. Now on these ones, thankfully, they offer you holes to get a regular steering wheel puller on there. Other years, you might have just hooks in the side here in the frame of the wheel to get a regular two jaw on here and press off of it. Either way, you don't wanna press onto the threads on here. So what you do, put your bolt back on and it's not gonna take much to press it off. There's gonna be an initial pop and that's it. Put it in a couple threads, okay? And then we're going to use our puller and we'll press off the center of the bolt, not on your steering column shaft. So we'll go ahead and do that next. Okay, the puller's installed on there, nice and even. Got our two bolts threaded in. Our bolt is back onto there, so we have something to press off of. Got it snug and straight. And I'll show you how it is. It'll be an initial pop and that's it. That wasn't even that bad. And that's all there is to it. So push it back on, keep it on there, and then we'll pull our puller off of here. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get our bolt out that we use the press off of, go to the side. Now, most of these have a focus problem, uh, a locating nub on here, like this one right here, that only allows the steering wheel to spline to the shaft one way. So if yours has that, there's no need to mark. Otherwise, you wanna make sure you mark the relationship between the shaft and the wheel. You can see there's a lot of splines on here. Besides that, this thing just pulls right off of here. So at this point, it should just slide right off here since we pressed it off already. And we're gonna pull it, pull it, pull it, but we're gonna be mindful of these two connections for the airbag. We're gonna feed them through the opening on here get it out of the way. Now this clock spring right here, you wanna keep it centered where it's at when you pulled it off. You don't wanna start spinning it round and round on here because you're gonna stretch out the ribbon cable inside of here. So just keep it where it's at. We could even tape it to the other part of the housing here in a second uh, to make sure it doesn't move on us. Take your steering wheel, put it in the back seat for all those back seat drivers. 
All right, now we're down to the meat and potatoes of the steering column right here. So we're gonna pull off a few of these attaching components on here, and then we're gonna get right to that ignition lock module. First thing we're gonna do is take a screw here, it should be a screw here for the clock spring. Let's get that out of the way. Be very careful, it's a T20. These little screws, put them off to the side, and this should slide right off of here on the escapes. So make sure we don't lose our screw. Put it to the side. Next, we'll pull off this piece right here. It's like a bracket plus the turn signal switch. Take it off all at once. There's a 5.5 millimeter bolt right here, right here, and right here. Again, you want to keep all these little bolts off to the side so we keep them with the components. You can see none of this is too hard. It's just a lot of small stuff in the way, uh, which is common. Steering, steering columns are complicated, uh, but these aren't so bad. So at this point, you can see it's kind of just falling right off of here. And there it is, right out in the open, nice and easy to get to. Before we start taking off the ignition lock module, make sure you release the harness over here from the housing of the lock module. There's a little push retainer right here. So make sure you get that out with your cat claw and off to the side. And then follow this wire up and over. There's gonna be another retainer right here for the harness. Get that out of the way. And of course we disconnected the PATS transceiver earlier. Now this wire right here is aftermarket, but we do need to release the uh, PATS transceiver right here. That does not come with it. So there's these little locks like this right here, and you simply lift up on them, and I think there's two on this one. There's one underneath here, and this thing will basically just fall off and just dangle off to the side. All right, so we'll go ahead and we'll release that lower clip on the patch transceiver. Just be very careful, and it'll basically just fall off to the side like that. Actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and take this harness and the patch transceiver, everything out of the way. We'll bring it over here, drop the main harness down so everything's out in the open because believe it or not, we need to cut a slot in this bolt right here just to get it off. Now the only thing still holding this lock module to the steering column is this one little bolt right here, but as you can see, there's no head on it to use a regular socket and a ratchet, okay? So what you need to do is make a slot in it, stick a big flathead screwdriver in there, and it'll simply turn right out of there. Now there's a few ways to make a slot in there. You can use a standard uh, hacksaw, being very gentle, of course, with the, the instrument cluster and all that stuff that's here. What I use is a standard cutoff wheel like this. We'll put some protection down here, then we'll just get in there, we'll make a nice little slot, and then we'll take it right out with the screwdriver. Now what I do is something like this, I'll use a protective blanket on the cluster and the trim panel, and then down below here, I'll, I'll use another blanket to catch any kind of shavings, but it looks something like this. And you're just cutting a slot deep enough for your screwdriver, that's it. No need to go any further. And there you have it. Once there's a slot cut in it, we can simply take our big flathead screwdriver, get it down in there, push down so we don't round it off. Okay. And then it loosens right up. After that, it'll just come right out. And that's the way you get these out. Now, for years, I use the same bolt, no problem, going back in a little blue Loctite. But today I'm gonna to show you the factory bolt that's a shear off type bolt. And we'll show you that here too. You can do it either way. And then it simply comes right off of there. Now once your old lock module is out, we need to take our ignition lock cylinder here and put our key in, put it to the accessory position. It's your very first position. And that top here, there's a little hole. You stick a pick or something like that in there, release it, and this whole thing will come right out. And we'll transfer this to the new lock module.
Now the new lock module is gonna come in the run position, not accessory. We need to insert the lock cylinder into here in the accessory position so we can release that, that locking tab. So get in here with the cat claw like this. We're gonna get in there and turn it back one detent on there. And then we're gonna take our lock cylinder. We're gonna line up this part right here to lock with that notch, just like so. And then we're going to kind of feel where it's at on there. And you'll feel it all spline into there. There we go. See how it just kind of popped into there? Everything was lined up inside that, that D-shaped uh, detent inside of there. At that point, you'll be able to pull your key out like normal. And the lock cylinder is locked in there now. Good to go. All right, so we'll do a quick wipe. Get all the dust and dirt off and out of the way. And then we'll take our new lock module and we'll just kind of center it over it. Now underneath there, there's gonna be a slot. You're gonna match it with this slot right here. It'll kind of just fall into place. So see, it's not working, it's not working. Oh wait, there it is. It fits nice and snug and this goes right over. Now here is the new breakaway bolt. You can see it's designed to break away on there. No torque spec, you simply tighten it until it breaks. So we'll go ahead and we'll thread it by hand. Thread it, thread it, thread it. We'll snug it. Okay, and then just look around, make sure it's flush all the way around, nice and straight. It should be locked in that channel underneath there and that aligns everything for you. We'll simply go ahead and tighten this. There we go. That's all there is to it. Broke off of there, we're tight. Now we can start the assembly process. So, you know, it's basically the reversal of removal. We're gonna push all these push pins back in. We're gonna put this over, lock it in, get it ready. Our, all our connectors, just start snapping them back in while everything's open. Make sure they click and lock like that. We'll bring this transceiver up and over like so. Just make sure you lock it in top and bottom. You have to get a line first and then it should lock right in. Be patient. All right, locked in. Connector on the back side. Okay, everything's good to go here. Over here, push fasteners, all that good stuff. We can start putting the pieces back on. Now what's nice about this is that it just kind of builds upon itself. It just keeps building over and over and all kind of just locks in and aligns perfectly for you. Uh, so we'll put this piece back on the bracket for the turn signal switch and then we'll just start tightening up all the 5.5 millimeter bolts and we'll be good to go. We'll go ahead and get our clock spring back into there. They do lock in to this other piece here. So just fall right into place, just like that. Okay. So all designed to go together. Pretty, pretty precise fit. And I tighten all stuff down by hand, pretty much. Especially the final tightening, because it is all plastic. We'll get these two screws back in for the clock spring. Snug it up, fully aligned. This is ready to go. We'll leave this part right here disconnected. That's for the airbag and all that stuff. Back on the back side here, we're gonna connect up our turn signal switch. All right. Everything's back together over here. Everything's together over here. Let's get the steering wheel on. So we'll take our steering wheel, fish through our airbag connectors, and then we're gonna line up these two yellow uh, alignment nubs back here with the steering wheel. It'll kind of self-align. And of course, this one fell right into the slots in the shaft too. Take this connector right here while we're in here, and we'll lock that guy in. To the clock spring it's all connected and we'll get our horn 
and airbag connectors ready to go. But first, take your steering wheel bolt right here, little blue Loctite on there. We'll get it threaded in by hand, and then we'll tighten this down. I think the torque spec on here is 30 foot-pounds. I'll put the information down below in the video description. I just snug them down with an impact generally. All right, airbag, just lay it down here nice and gentle. Get your horn connected. That spade terminal, make sure it's fully locked on. And then we'll take our two connectors for our squibs and get them fully locked in. Now these should have a memory to them, uh, but they also should not go in the other direction. Okay, that's all locked in, good to go. Our harnesses are out of the way. Now you're gonna take this, you're gonna lay it in here real nice and gentle, okay? And there's gonna be a couple different key points on there that's gonna align. It looks good, right? And then you're gonna take it, and you're gonna push it in like that. And then you're gonna push it, and it should release just like that so you have good horn action. And that's back together. Let's get our connector snapped in for the clock spring. Get it aligned in here. We'll fully clips in, and there should be a retainer right here for it to lock down into there. Let's get this trim panel back on for our steering column shroud. Just kind of snake it in there, same way you took it off. And then we'll get these three bolts started. Get them all lined. Like so. I have to pull that up to get to the last one. Go ahead and snug these down. Now, once the bottom part of it is screwed in and holding in place, we'll drop the column down. And we'll take our completed upper piece, get it centered over the hazard switch here, and then just start getting it aligned. All little locking tabs. And then we'll get it into place and snap down. There we go. Good to go. We're centered in the ignition. And we can try it out. All right, everything's back together. The repair is completed. At this point, you want to connect your battery back up if you disconnected it. And we can go ahead and try it out. So turn the key to the on position. Everything should power up and look normal. Prove out. We can go ahead and try it out. And there you go, ready to drive EV mode on this hybrid. But of course yours would go ahead and just start right up, show some RPMs, and just try it a few times. Make sure it's okay, over and over again. And what you're gonna notice is that the ignition lock cylinder turns much smoother now, and everything just seems to work. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope I've helped you fix your Ford yourself. I'll see you next time, guys.